Okay, I started the webinar officially um, just to give students a couple minutes to come in. So welcome to anyone who is joining now and this will be recorded and we will start at 10 o'clock, maybe 10.01. Welcome in minute students. I'm going to get started in about one minute with the presentation. Okay, once again, welcome to this presentation. Uh, this will be presented to you by uh, USC graduate admissions for the Viterbi School of Engineering, as well as our aerospace and mechanical engineering department. So um, congratulations again on your admission. And I am joined here today by Dr. Paul Rani, one of our professors and Zoe Ashmead, who is one of the advisors for the AME department, as well as a few of my colleagues from the graduate admissions for the Viterbi School of Engineering and some students who will be here for the panel. So thanks again for taking the time to join us. And once again, congratulations on your admission. My name is Maria and I will kick off the presentation right now. Okay, so just a few considerations um, when you are deciding to where you're gonna go for your graduate studies. We know you have many choices, likely you've been admitted to multiple universities. So these are just a few things to keep in mind when you're deciding where to go. Um, so some things you can consider are your career and academic goals after the completion of your grad studies. Also, you might wanna consider the location. Um, do you wanna be in a major metropolitan area with lots of access to you know internship opportunities research opportunities an airport etc um or would you want to be in like a college town so that's something to consider also um strength of alumni networks which we'll get into more about that with usc and research opportunities if that's something that you're interested in which likely you might be in, as an engineer so a little bit more about LA. Uh, many of you have probably already visited LA. Maybe you're from LA. Uh, maybe you'll be coming to LA for the first time in the near future. So if you didn't know, LA is a global hub for innovation. So you probably heard about Silicon Valley up in Northern California. And if you didn't know, we have a Silicon Beach down here. So a lot of the tech companies that originated in Silicon Valley have now in the last several years opened up offices down here um, because you know the beach is an inspiring place to work and a lot of people want to work for these major companies but live in LA and so we have as you can see here on the map a lot of these major companies that are not too far from our campus right here in LA. Other things that we have to offer is we have a really amazing career center. Um, so um, Viterbi Career Connections has lots of extensive offerings. 
And you can see these are listed here on the slide. Um, so we have like a lot of support for our students. And this, you know, career center is devoted just specifically for our students. So there's, um, you know, a lot of people who want to help specifically Viterbi grad students. And there's a lot of resources. You know, we, of course, have career fairs. We have advising. Um, a lot of those major companies that we listed on the previous slide do come to our campus. They do want to hire our students. Um, they know that USC is an amazing school for studying engineering and computer science. And so they definitely want to recruit our students. And, um, you know, you can also get help with a lot of other things like resume workshops and things like that. And so there's definitely, a, you know, a lot of resources here to help you to kick off your career or, and internship experiences. Um, these are just another, you know, another slide about different things that we have going on related to um, the Career Center. For example, like, you know, we had a Meet SpaceX um, uh, event, and then we have Trojan Talks. We have a career and internship boot camp. So there's a lot of things going on, mock interviews, lots of things to help you. This, you know, these services are here specifically to help you. We want to make sure that you succeed. Also, every year we do a graduate student, graduating student survey. So if you're wondering, which um, likely you are, like where are the students who study at USC that invest in a degree at USC Viterbi, where are they going after they graduate? So we do have all that information. We collect that and we keep it up to date every year. So you can see like our students are going to really impressive places. Um, you know, they're working for a lot of the major companies and then they're working for other companies too, like in their own home countries or here um, all over the world. Lots of really cool opportunities. So you can see there's just a few listed here. I mean, just a few by, by that, I mean like 40 and there's way more. So um, yeah, there's lots of really great opportunities that are in our students are, we have an extensive alumni network, which I'll get into as well. So about our community. So we have students, um, you know, from literally all over the world, specifically in Viterbi, we have so many different types of students coming from all different places. Um, we have students coming from like 80 different countries and um, we have a lot of international students and we have domestic students. We also have a high population of women in engineering. So, um, so yeah, like you can meet all different types of people and it makes for um, a great opportunity to collaborate and also just meet other people that are interesting that you might not meet otherwise. Um, and then, you know, of course we have a great community. So students get really involved. We want you to have fun with each other. Um, obviously, Studying is really important, but we want to build a community as well. And that just kind of happens naturally at USC. Um, you know, students have a lot of great opportunities to bond with each other. And there's always like fun things going on too. Lots of campus activities you can see here in the pictures. Um, you know, USC is a big football school and the games are really fun. Um, but that's not the only thing going on. There's so many things going on um, for all different types of interests. We have so many different clubs. And if you have a club idea that doesn't already exist, you can start that. We have clubs that are specific to Viterbi, specific to Viterbi grad students, specific to different countries that um, where international students are coming from. And just any kind of interest you can think of, we, we have those opportunities to bond with other students. Another cool offering that we have is the Viterbi Graduate Mentorship Program. So new students are paired with current Viterbi grad students, um, mostly through the same academic department and degree level. So this is a great opportunity to have like a mentor who's another student who can guide you through grad school and just also be your friend. So um, I think this is another really great thing to consider, um, especially if you're coming from somewhere and this is LA is like new to you or USC is new to you, um, you kind of can get an automatic friend and mentor in the process. And then, of course, 
Um, you know, very important, if you are planning to come to USC, please check your letter, admission, letter of admission for the last day that you can submit your statement of intent and commitment deposit. Um, mostly that will be April 15th or May 1st. So make sure you double check your letter and be sure to submit your statement of intent and deposit in time so that we can secure your place. And then there's a lot of advantages to submitting the statement of intent. Um, when you do that, you'll unlock all the special features like pre-orientation resources. Um, you can join the Viterbi Mentorship Program and you can connect with your department through academic webinars, which you're, like you're doing right now. And um, you can also explore any housing options that you, know, you can look into for coming to LA. Um, also, just a heads up to any international students who might be joining us today. Um, we beginning just a few days ago, um, the, all your financial documents will be required to be submitted through a new system that we just released. It's called Trojan International. Uh, basically, you just submit your financial documents through this system. Um, don't email them to us. Do it through the system. And then once you do that, then you'll get your I-20 and then um, you can start working on getting your visa. So. Uh, you know, make sure you read about this in detail. There's a QR code here you can scan or you can find it on our website as well. Other next steps. Um, so obviously exploring USC is really important. Um, if you do have the opportunity to come in person or if you haven't yet, um, obviously that would be an amazing way to see the campus. But if you can't make it here um, before you have to decide, then definitely take a virtual tour of our campus. Um, there is a link right here. You can also find it easily on our website um, if you just search USC virtual tour. Or you can also set up your own tour um, at your convenience or reach out to us to set that up. You can explore the student organizations. Lots of students have questions about student safety and wellness. Here's a link for that as well. And then you can check out our international student services. Another thing is that if you wanna to talk to a student one-on-one, -on -one, we do have uh, Viterbi graduate student ambassadors and there's a website and a QR code you can scan right here, or you can also look at on the website later. Here you can filter all the ambassadors from their major and even their home country. And then you can chat with them and they're super friendly, super willing to help you. They're excited to chat with you and um, they'll be able to share their experiences. You can ask them about anything. Um, you know, you can ask them about the major, but you can also ask them just about like, what's campus life like, or like what recommendations do you have for like where I should look for an apartment and things like that. Or like, what's a great restaurant to check out when I'm visiting campus. They're just happy to help you with all kinds of questions related to Viterbi and student life in general. So finally, um, I'm going to wrap up my portion of the presentation. You can contact us anytime. We are on Instagram at USC Engineer. We are on Facebook, if anyone still uses that, at USC Viterbi Graduate Programs. Um, we're not on TikTok, uh, but you can find us on these social medias and you can contact us anytime. Um, there's our link. Also, you can just you know go to USC um, Engineer and you can find us and feel free to reach out with any questions that you have. Also, for any questions that you have now or throughout this webinar presentation, please put them in the Q&A and we will address them throughout. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Professor Ronnie and he will go into the presentation about AME. Thanks again for joining us and um, please stay on until um, the hour is over because we have a lot of exciting content coming up. Okay, sh should I go ahead then? Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Paul Ronnie. I'm the chair of aerospace and mechanical engineering. Congratulations on your admission. I'm glad to see that there's a lot of you here, about 50 of you. This is my executive vice chair, Cavalier here, who helps me out. Uh, on all kinds, advises me on all kinds of matters. Uh, let me, he likes to eat the chair. All right, so let me pull up my presentation here. One second here, please. Uh, 
Okay, almost there. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. Okay, so first, just a little bit about myself. Uh, as I said, I'm the chair of the uh, Aerospace Mechanical Engineering Department. I received my doctorate from MIT in aeronautics and astronautics. My research is on combustion and energy and in general chemically reacting flows. I've had experiments flown on three space shuttle missions. I was a backup crew member for the first two of those. Uh, I didn't get to fly in space, but I did go through all the training. And I'm a fellow of a few professional organizations. As you can see, I like horses, or at least I like uh, enabling my daughter to like horses. And you know, I do ride them also. And I really like outdoor sports uh, when I'm uh, not working. So just a little bit about AME. Uh, we have 17 um, uh, full professors of which 15, actually I think it's 16, are fellows of at least one of the major professional organizations. So it's a very distinguished group of senior faculty, two associate professors and uh, eight uh, assistant professors. And you know, of all those faculty, half have received one of the highly coveted early career awards uh, that are earmarked for uh, junior faculty members. We also have, um, 10 teaching track faculty, one research faculty member, and quite a number of part-time le uh, lecturers. And these are people who are from the mostly from the local industry. They're experts in their field, for example, aerospace structures, and uh, so they're, or flight mechanics. So they are really the experts, you know, who use, who practice this every day. And so they're very well qualified to teach these specialized courses, you know, that you may be interested in uh, as part of your master's program. And our undergraduate our population, you know, we have, you know, around uh, 550 or 600 undergraduates, about 500 uh, master's students, about half, I think, of which maybe Zoe has a better handle on this, are full-time, you know, the others are part-time, and about 100 PhD students. Our rankings have been increasing uh, over the past three years. And uh, you know that's one of the things that I'm trying to do. I'm trying to increase the value of your degree from um, uh, from USC as time passes. The higher the ranking, in a sense, the higher the value of your degree. And actually, this year's rankings will be coming out any day now, so I'll know very shortly whether what I've been doing in the past year to try to help our rankings has been successful or not. In terms of where our uh, students go. Um, this is sort of for all um, all levels here. It's not broken out by master's students here. You know, about half go to employment, half go into graduate school. A lot of them are, especially master's students, are continuing their current job. You see a few go into military service or start their own uh, business ventures. I list then our average starting salaries, which I think are uh, are pretty impressive. And you say, well, what, what are the biggest sources or who, who are the biggest employers of our graduates? You see Boeing and Northrop Grumman, two of the largest uh, local aerospace companies are there. And uh, also Jet Propulsion Lab, NASA Jet Propulsion Lab and ASML, which uh, they make, um, they make um, semiconductor fabrication equipment at the master's level. Rivian, in case you don't know, is an electric truck manufacturer. They're sort of two trucks, what Tesla is to uh, is to cars. So just a few of our accomplishments recently. Uh, I mentioned the National Science Foundation Early Career Awards. Two of our faculty just recently won those. Um, and uh, one of those faculty won a Viterbi Award. Our SK Gupta, who's our um, senior you know, leader in the manufacturing area, within our department wins a lot wins a lot of awards i get kind of boring because every time there's an award as to chair i have to write a little blurb you know about you know, about the award and and professor gupta's uh, accomplishments and i find him doing that just about every month uh, another of our senior faculty professor asad oberai has been uh, received several awards as have his students one of our teaching track faculty bo jin has won a couple of awards recently and even one of our the um 
adjunct lecturers. These are, again, people who teach generally just one class per year, but are experts in the local industry and who could bring in that industry experience. Uh, one of them just recently received the uh, NASA Exceptional Service Medal. So um, among the students that uh, one of the things that we've done is our formerly SAE team, those of you who are undergraduates who probably know about the formula SAE program. And uh, so NASCAR actually built a track inside of the Los Angeles Coliseum. And two days before their NASCAR race, they invited our team and UCLA's team to, to do a, a competition on their track. And we won. Um, and also our aero design team, that's sort of, that's our biggest uh, competition team for aerospace engineers, at least for aeronautical engineers within our department. And, and uh, they have won the national championship three of the past uh, eight years in their competition. Uh, also, we have our senior design students. This is for undergraduates, not for master's students. Our senior design students have been winning uh, national undergrad or at least regional undergraduate uh, uh, competitions. And one of our undergraduates was recently featured. She is quite an extraordinary individual in terms of her service, commitment to service. And she was fe featured on a recent uh, Disney document, uh, documentary. So from my perspective, now you probably, you may not have the perspective, you know, being relatively new to this field about what are, what's new in mechanical and aerospace engineering. In my mind, compared to when I was your age, the things that are different are these five things in particular. Computer-aided design, instead of when I started, we were just using drafting of pencil and paper. Uh, also, we have simulation tools, whether we're looking at some engineered system from the point of view of structural mechanics, any fluid flow or aerodynamical behavior, you know, heat transfer, thermal systems, electrical or electromagnetic components. All this is simulated now, whereas before we had to do typically experiments to test them. Also, now when once we have an idea of what we want and we've simulated it, then we don't just you know take a block of material and start removing material. Uh, we do what we call additive manufacturing, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, or 3D printing. Also, every engineered system nowadays has many, like they take your car has hundreds of sensors to sense temperatures, pressures, flow rates, positions, rotation speeds, you name it, uh, as well as then actuators to, once the uh, computers read all those sensors and decide, well, what should I do? Then it uh, actuates various things, whether it be related to the engine, whether it's your environmental control system, your suspension, et cetera. So it's completely different than uh, when I was your age. And also we're much more collaborative now than we were, um, than we were, you know, when I started. You know, back then the mechanical engineers and the electrical engineers and the, say the human factor safety engineers, they were all kind of um, siloed. But nowadays, it's much more integrated than it used to be. In our department, what are some of our what are oops sorry what are some of our strategic directions? Robotics and autonomous systems. These are the areas where we've been hiring new faculty. Robotics and autonomous systems, energy and sustainability, design and manufacturing, medicine and bioengineering are the main ones, um, and we're particularly interested in. Uh, emphases in artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, and as well as aerospace systems. These are our two biggest uh, employers of our graduates are both uh, aerospace companies. Some of our major research facilities include the uh, Dryden Wind Tunnel, um, which is a very large, a very low, uh, low turbulence wind tunnel. Uh, great for doing certain types of aerodynamic research. Uh, our Blue Water Channel, for doing water flow uh, experiments, and also our Center for Advanced Manufacturing, which does robotics and uh, you know 3D printing, other types of manufacturing. So just to conclude, why why do I think, from my point of view, why do I think you know you should consider USC and why uh, aerospace mechanical engineering? I think because of the you know our focus, 
on the quality and the impact of what we do, not necessarily a quantity of papers. We're a relatively small but growing department. You'll get a lot of interaction. Our class sizes are small. You get a lot of interaction with faculty. For master's students, most of our courses are, you know, maybe 20 up to at most 40 students. We don't have many except for maybe the one required math course. Very few of them, I think, are above 40 students. We have a lot of student-led activities, most of which are, are, are um, open to master's students uh, and a mostly uh, collegial group of, uh, of faculty and staff. I put mostly uh, as a, um, as a, a catch-all in case someone maybe isn't once in a while. I think we have very proactive and innovative administration. And uh, of course, the nearby industries that I mentioned, uh, or that was already mentioned, the aerospace industry, Silicon Beach, you already heard about, not to mention our automotive and entertainment uh, industries. Uh, some of our graduates have gone on, for example, to Disney Imagineering. And one, one thing I consider sort of our secret weapon is uh, the Trojan family. You've probably heard a lot about that already. But from my personal experience, I was a student at four different universities and on the faculty at another university before coming here. And before I came here, you know, none of those five universities really had much of a sense of family or spirit. And so when I came here and people were talking about this Trojan family, Trojan spirit thing, I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. But I really found that there was always something to it. It really is a very tightly knit community and you should embrace that, uh, that family atmosphere. And so why Southern California? Part of this was already mentioned. For me, again, this is me personally. For me, is the weather. Yeah, it's nice. Oh, it's pretty chilly today by our standards. The culture, again, we have great culture. For me, okay, that's nice, but it's not the main thing. For me, it's the geography. I can go, literally, I could go surfing um, in the morning at the beach. I could go skiing in the mountains in the afternoon and go um, off-roading in the desert in the evening, literally all in the same day. And USC actually has a research uh, facility on Catalina Island, and you can actually go out there and use their kayaks, their snorkeling gear, and you know spend a day there for a very nominal fee. So anyway, whatever you decide to do, whether it's um, at USC or somewhere else, you know you've got a long, uh, you've got a long steep hill to climb to get your master's degree, and I wish you all the best. Um, anybody know where that is? Yeah, that's half dome in Yosemite. Right now it's all covered with snow. This was, I took this picture during the summer when I climbed it. Anyway, again, thank you for listening and uh, we'll be more than happy to answer uh, any questions you have. Thank you, Professor Ronnie. If anyone has any questions for him right now, please put them in the Q&A and we'll take a few minutes um, to answer any questions that you would like to address specifically to him. Yeah, I see we got the right answer already, Half Dome. <laughs> so we do have one question already. Um, do master students generally go on to work in industry or continue graduate study for a PhD? Yeah, it's a great question. And it depends. Uh, we recruit about half of our PhD students out of our master's program. I consider that to be a good route. It's kind of a win-win because then typically what happens for me and for a lot of our faculty is that, you know, we'll be teaching a master's level class and a student will come up to me and say, oh, you know, I really like this class, this, this type of, uh, uh, I really like this subject, but, you know, could I get involved in research in lab? And if I think the student's good, I'll say, yeah, okay. And I give them a small project to do. And then after that, if they like the work and I like the work that they've done, then I invite them to apply for our PhD program. Uh, so I would say that that's more go straight in, into industry than go into PhD programs after that. But it's certainly a, a route that's completely open if you're interested. Oh, thank you so much. We have another question. I want to know more about the courses and unit selection. Um, we could save that for the advising if you think that's more appropriate. Yeah, maybe Zoe can answer that in, in uh, her part. Okay. Um, and then 
Uh, can you share more information about the product development program? Is it heavier on the coursework or on the project work? Hmm. Yeah, um, I would say I'm not in that area, but I would say it's probably about evenly split because I know that, of course, I know the faculty that are uh, involved in that. And I know there are a lot of project oriented classes associated with that track, whether it's 50 uh percent or not that I'm, i don't know for sure maybe zoe has a better idea Anna. sorry um i say uh between the in in the product development engineering um it's about yeah i would say about 50 percent between the the two that's pretty accurate Okay, um, one more question that we'll take um, until we start the next portion of the presentation. What's the best way to ask PIs of labs you'd like to work with them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the best way is, you know, if you're in their, their class, of course, that's the best way. If you don't happen to be in their class, then the next thing to do is just, you know, go to their websites, see whose work interests you, and then just you know, email them saying, could I meet with you sometime? Find out when their offer, office hours are and drop by during office hours. Okay, great, thank you so much. Um, so we're going to turn it over to the advisor present part of the presentation. And this will also be, um, you know, with the students. So this will be our student panel and I will hand it over to Zoe. I believe you are a co-host now, so feel free to take it away. Yeah, oh, I see there's one more question. Um, oh, yeah, are there ahead. research opportunities for online distance uh, students? I mean, that's more challenging. To be honest, that's much more challenging. Uh, obviously, if you're doing experimental work, like I'm an experimentalist, it wouldn't be appropriate. And um, but you know, certainly if you're doing computational work or product development work, um, that's certainly much more of a possibility. Again, it's just whatever you can arrange with your individual um, um, advisor. Thanks again, Dr. Ronnie. Zoe, feel free to take over. All right, fantastic. Well, I want to just once more say congratulations and welcome to USC and Viterbi and the AME department. Um, I'm very excited to have the opportunity to uh, to talk with you all today, um, and even more excited to introduce our AME student panel. Uh, so we have two current AME master's students with us today who are going to be ask, um, answering some questions and helping you learn a little bit more about the student experience at the Turby and USC and in AME. So we're going to go ahead and dive right in. I've got some questions prepared uh, for our panelists, but if any of you attending today have questions for the panelists, please feel free to put them in the Q&A and we'll get to as many as we can. Uh, so I would just like to start off with a pretty basic. We have our two panelists introduce themselves. Tell us your name, major, hometown, and why you chose to attend USC. So whoever wants to take it away can go first. Um, okay, I'll go first. Uh, hi, everyone. First of all, congrats on your admits. Uh, my name is Opasna. I'm majoring in mechanical engineering. I'm from Hyderabad, which is in India. And I picked USC, as most of you heard in the presentation before, because of the proximity to the industries that are close by, because of the flexibility in the coursework that the degree itself provides, and also the uh, ongoing research that was. Uh, that's been going on at USC. Yeah, hello, uh, this is Sumant and my hometown is Vijayawada, which is in Andhra Pradesh uh, in India. So I chose USC as it has uh, uh, most of the research opportunities that I want to do in the aerospace engineering field. I'm sorry, and my major is uh, aerospace engineering track as well. Uh, and also, uh, I thought uh, USC is the correct fit for me as the, the course flexibility uh, depends on you uh, to choose what courses you want to do this particular semester and it has the course continuity uh, connecting with each semester that you have. Uh, so yeah, so I'm, I'm glad that I joined USC. Fantastic. We love to hear it. 
All right, so uh, the, talking about academics and classes, uh, would you each tell us what has been your favorite class you have taken or are taking and why? And if you can't choose a particular class, feel free to tell us about an interesting project or topic that you worked on in one of your classes. Um, yeah, so this semester I'm taking AME 511, which is compressible gas dynamics. Uh, I've been able to learn a lot about uh, supersonic flight, uh, about nozzles, uh, design for jets. It's been a very interesting uh, course because uh, that kind of advanced knowledge is what you get when you take a grad level course at AME here at USC. Um, this course, we're about to start a computational fluid dynamics project, which is going to be a group effort. And I'm really looking forward to applying what I learned and learned in my class hands on in a project. So, yeah, uh, and this semester I, I took AME 529, which is uh, aircraft structural analysis. So uh, I'm still figuring it out, like which part of structures that I want to go, because I'm a big enthusiast of, his, of the structure stack in the aer aerospace engineering itself. So I think I chose this course at the perfect time so that uh, I can figure it out. So which track I want to go, like uh, maybe some of you might know that uh, uh, there is even more number of uh, parts in the structures field, like uh, finite element methods or the uh, elasticity part or uh, still uh, dynamics thing you can do. So this course consists of all these uh, intro, intro parts of every, every branch of the structures. So I thought uh, I took a correct decision uh, that I took this course first so that I can figure it out uh, which uh, part of the structures field I want to go into next. So yeah, and so that uh, once I figure it out, uh, I can continue my research work uh, that I started previously in India in my undergrad. Yeah. Fantastic, thank you. So could you share with us um, about how many classes are you taking each semester and how demanding do you feel the coursework is for those classes? Maybe even how does it compare to uh, the courses that you took in, in undergrad? What does that look like as a graduate student? Um, in terms of number of classes per semester, it's very less com uh, compared to back in undergrad. Uh, grad students, we normally take about uh, on average two classes every semester and each class is four units so eight units a semester I have friends who have taken more, more than two courses and I've heard that it gets pretty challenging managing the assignments and projects but then uh, two classes per semester you get uh, maybe one or two assignments per week and then you meet for projects and office hours so it's not demanding at all. You get your own time. And at the same time, you're spending enough time on the class itself. So yeah, even I took uh, two, two courses in this semester. So I think it's not uh, too many. At the same time, it's not also too less. You can concentrate on the two subjects uh, or the two courses that you took in this semester very, uh, uh, very concentrated way so that uh, you get the grip on the subject so that uh, it it, uh, it will be useful in your future as well. So uh, when compared to my undergrad, it's a bit of hectic for me in India. So I used to take uh, five or six courses per semester. So I, I think it's a bit heavy, but now I feel it uh, not too easy, but it's the right amount of uh, uh, difficulty level that you can expect a, in a master's course that you can uh, I uh, do. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you both so much. And I will say absolutely agree. Two to three courses maximum. Two is probably is the is the the average for most students who are um, attending on campus. Uh, for students who are working full time, maybe taking classes through our uh, distance education network DEN program, usually one class per semester is is the the norm. Potentially two, depending on your life circumstances and things like that. But usually we recommend at least start. Starting, starting with one uh, for those who are working full time. All right, so next question for our panelists. 
How do you feel like the program has or is helping you achieve your career goals? Um, so like the most important aspect to this, I would say is the flexibility that the course offers. There's just one mandatory course, which is AME 525, the math course. Other than that, it is completely up to you what courses you take and which direction you want to take for your master's degree. There are a few uh, specializations that are listed on the AME website uh, along with the courses that would be recommended if you're interested in those specializations. But then again, it's totally up to you how you want to tailor those, what uh, courses you want to take. There's also an option to take a couple of courses from other departments in Viterbi, uh, which might help you uh, refine your degree even more. Uh, so yes, I totally support her statement because uh, the two courses that two or three courses that you want to take in a semester, uh, only one is the mandatory course that you will be finishing it in your first semester uh, once you start your master's program. And uh, there are uh, many, uh, many uh, specializations in the aerospace uh, engineering field itself, where I myself uh, is willing to take this uh, aerospace structures uh, uh, specialization, where uh, this AME 525 is the mandatory course and the rest of the six or seven courses, which uh, add up to the credits that I need to finish my master's degree is totally my choice that which I want to take. As there, there are a list of courses all as well uh, in order to guide you uh, to finish this exact specialization that you want to do uh, in your respective field. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's, it totally depend, uh, it's, uh, depends on you, like which course to take and which course, uh, which field you want to pursue your uh, master's in, uh, in the aerospace engineering as well. Like there are fluids, there are structures, there are materials. Uh, and our friend Upasana told like she's doing mechanical and there are uh, many, many other, I think there are seven to eight, uh, specialization branches in the aerospace engineering this aerospace and mechanical engineering department yeah fantastic fantastic i'd like to take this opportunity to to put in an, an advisor answer here um and especially to address the some of the questions that we've had in the chat um so as uh, we mentioned um, off the top, most of our master's students or the largest portion of our master's students are in either the master's in mechanical engineering or the master's in aerospace engineering. These are extremely flexible degrees as we've heard only one required class and the rest you get to choose based on your own interests. Um, we do offer, as Samantha mentioned, um, the specializations within each of those uh, master's degrees, which basically are not requirements, but are more like guidelines. So if you're interested in aerospace structures, or if you're interested in, uh, in controls or interested in design, you have a template or a guideline for the classes that you can choose, but you're not held to that. You are, you're able to have that flexibility. We do offer several um, more specific specialized master's degrees like the MS in dynamics and controls or computational fluid and solid mechanics. And those degrees do have specific course requirements that uh, that are uh, cover most of your units. There's a little bit of room for electives in some of those, but mostly they have specific degree requirements. Um, one of our uh, attendees asked if you were admitted into one of those more specific degree programs, is it possible to, to potentially change to one of the more flexible degree programs? The answer is yes. Um, within the AME department, you're admitted to the AME department master's program, you are able to change to a different master's degree program if it aligns better with your goals and interests. The requirements are just that you complete one semester um, and earn at least a 3.0 GPA in that, um, in that particular semester, uh, and then you're able to, to change the, your major. And even in that first semester, you can likely select classes that will work towards both of the your current degree and the degree program that you're most interested in. I'd like to throw a quick question in the or a quick uh, link in the chat, uh, which is the link to our academics webpage on the AME AME department webpage. If you scroll down to the bottom of this webpage, you'll find um, the uh, buttons for each of the different master's degree programs. You can click into each of those and find detailed information about the requirements 
and class options for um, for all of our different degrees. So if you're interested in learning more about those uh, those different degree options, courses, requirements, that is a fantastic place to start. All right, turning it back over to our panelists. Uh, so we've talked a lot about classes, things that you've done um, academically, but I want to hear about things outside of classes. What um, have you been involved in or opportunities that you have taken advantage of or are interested in getting involved in, whether that's research, internships, clubs and organizations on campus? What's your life look like outside of class? Uh, yeah, so at the beginning of the semester, I joined the Fluid Structure Interactions Lab, which is at USC Viterbi under Dr. Mithul Lohar. I've been working on uh, porous media and heat transfer. It's been something that I've been interested in since my undergrad, and I'm really glad I'm able to extend that research here at USC as well. Um, other than that, I'm involved in Women in Engineering at USC, which is a student-run organization which helps uh, women in STEM uh, with networking opportunities to get to know each other and just provide an overall supportive group of uh, people uh, uh, being women in STEM. So yeah, my life outside of the class is like, it's so interesting, USC, one word about USC, if you ask me, I would say it's everything. Not only the classes, you have more extracurricular activities that you can do on campus. As our friend said, uh, networking is one of the major thing and the alumni of USC, they're very openly welcoming each and everyone to connect with them to share their experiences and even if there is a chance to help uh, personally they're uh, always willing willing to do this is my personal thing that i want to say because i experienced it this this semester uh, I, i'm i'm an international student so that you can understand how the struggle would be to get uh, into the uh, job thing so they're uh, really openly welcoming me like they're giving me the suggestions that uh, these are the changes that you have to make in your profile so that uh, you can get the job uh, get easily so and also uh, there are many uh, events happening on campus like uh, many uh, organizations uh, especially for aerospace like Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin and the Boeing they really do visit the campus and they are uh, willing to see the students profiles and they're even willing if you are in your last semester or your last but one semester and they're willing to offer you an internship if you're really able to uh, uh, eligible uh, if you're eligible for that company so i personally like usc in the career aspects as well as the uh, co-curricular act activities as well you can you can find everything on ESC here. So as I said in the beginning of my intro, I'm glad that I joined ESC. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much. All right. So um, for uh, for students who are going to be attending on campus who maybe aren't familiar with the LA area, a big question can be, what does housing look like? Where do I live? How do I start that process? Can you tell us a little bit about um, how you found housing and maybe any tips or, or uh, pieces of information that are good to know? Um, yeah, so first of all, the thing that comes up with LA and the area that USC is in is safety. And to all of the students who are here who are worried about safety, I would say living around campus, you don't need to be scared because USC takes a lot of initiative in making sure that the students are safe. Uh, we have the Department of Safety here, which has uh, their yellow jackets, which are the safety personnel uh, located at each block, which uh, starting from 6 p.m. in the evening, and they're always looking out for your safety. Uh, so that's not an issue in terms of actually finding housing. There are a lot of uh, students. Oh, I think my video seems to be glitching. Yeah, so there are a lot of uh, uh, what helped me was WhatsApp groups, Telegram groups, where students banded together and uh, uh, they were searching for housing together. Normally, it's uh, leases are passed on, so students who are vacating their current housing pass it on to 
students who are coming on to campus the next year yes uh, as i can say that uh, la uh, you, you think you, you think it's not safe but as far as i can say it's uh, if you are around the campus and if you are around this dps safety zone you can see on the map google maps as well so if you are in that zone i can assure you that you are in a safe safe zone uh, where uh, you uh, you're not you should be not afraid of so because uh, usc take the initiative and they even has uh, uh took the initiative from the dps and they place some of the uh what do you say like uh, these people uh, around these areas uh, so that they can assure your safety around the campus and during the nights as well uh, they uh, it's it's like 24 by 7 they, they keeps on patrolling around the streets and you are safe uh, on campus and when it comes to the housing thing i live on campus uh, personally so uh, you can apply uh, through the websites uh, uh, if i if, uh, if i'm able to get the uh, link I, i would be placing in the chat now as well so you can apply there and you can also have some housing options like if you want to go off campus which is not too far from this dps zone uh, uh, there are even off campus housing options in this uh, department of public safety zone as well and uh, some of the websites uh, I, I would try to uh, put in the chat as well uh, yeah uh, i think it's not that hard to get a housing in la so uh, it depends on like uh, how much you want to spend in uh, for housing uh, for your housing in la so as as far as i can say uh, if you are around the campus if you are near to the campus you are totally safe uh, in the la yeah um i add on to that uh, there are uh, on campus housing options for master students but i've heard that it's uh, it fills up pretty quickly yes. so most on uh, most master students live off campus uh, there are a lot of options depending on what your budget is how much you're willing to spend so you don't need to be worried about that there is an option for everyone but i'd say be proactive about finding uh, housing if you've decided to commit to usc yes uh, that is all i want, I want to say as well I, i'll try to put the housing options uh, the websites and everything uh, within this time yeah thank you fantastic fantastic well thank you both so much for sharing your perspectives i would really appreciate hearing from folks who are going through it and 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 having that experience themselves that hopefully many of our students will be having soon um so for the last 10 or so minutes of our time together uh, we're going to kind of open up the floor for questions we've already got some great questions coming in through the chat um so if you have any any other questions please just open up that q and a box um, at the bottom of your screen and submit those questions either for myself as an advisor, for our student panelists, for Dr. Ronnie as a professor and the chair of the department, or for any of our admissions folks who are joining us today. Um, let us know what questions you have. Um, I'm going to start off by answering a question about our dual degree programs, which are the MS in mechanical engineering and engineering management or aerospace engineering and engineering management. So they are not actually, this dual degree program is not actually just taking the two degrees and smushing them together. The requirements are actually a little bit different. So if you are following the requirements for uh, for the, the uh, dual degrees, you wouldn't necessarily be completing kind of the full uh, mechanical degree requirements exactly as stated for the mechanical degree and then the engineering management degree also. So those are going to look a little different. And we really, you wouldn't be um, awarded one degree yeah, like in the middle if you focus just on one of the one of the requirements because those requirements are a little bit different um, than the the um the individual degrees so we generally recommend that students take take uh, classes in both areas because kind of the point is to be thinking about how you're going to be integrating these two areas in your your future career uh, but you have a lot of flexibility to decide exactly when you take which courses so that is up to you uh, to decide exactly how you want to um, how you want to proceed with those two different and interrelated subject areas
All right. I see another question on here. Um, is a master's degree is a master's thesis a degree requirement for the MS in aerospace engineering? Um, so I so the uh, thesis is an option for every single one of our degree programs, but it is not a requirement for every for any of the degree programs. So if you are interested in pursuing a thesis option, definitely talk to an advisor about that early on because it's generally a two semester uh, process. So we want to get on that um, towards very very much towards the beginning of your time. Um, and you can opt into that, um, and that will become a requirement of your degree if you opt in, but it is not required for any of our degrees. I don't know, Dr. Rani, if you want to speak at all to the, the advantage or what the thesis option brings to a student. Sure. Yeah, I find a number of students, you know, I, I, I'm honest with the students. I say, you know, this is probably going to be more work than just taking a couple more classes. Uh, but some say, no, I don't care about that. I really want the research experience. And I really don't want to commit to a PhD, you know, level research experience. So in that case, you know, you're totally welcome to do that. And again, it's just a matter of finding, you know, an advisor. That's basically then job one, if you're going to do that, is to identify an advisor and a topic, you know, that you want to work on and, and devote all that effort to. And make sure also that you, that the scope is appropriate, that it's not too broad, that it doesn't blossom into a PhD type research uh, experience and you're only getting a master's degree out of it. So make sure it's a very sort of limited, you know, fixed, you know, finite research task, which PhD theses are much more open-ended. Thank you. All right, so we have a few questions about on campus jobs on campus work. I don't know if either of you have any experience with that or any and any classmates who do. Uh, yeah, so on campus job, uh, there are they are available, I would say for international students, it's a little tougher because the number of positions are less. But saying that, yes, most of my friends are working on campus. Me here as a graduate student ambassador, this is my on-campus job. Uh, so yeah, there are options. Uh, uh, there's flexibility in term terms of the number of hours that you work, uh, when you work, what department you work in, uh, from uh, uh, students work in assistant positions uh, as receptionists or in the hospitality department or in the transportation department, uh, in the admissions office. So there are a lot of options for uh, on-campus opportunities for students. Yes, uh, there are a uh, number of jobs, but I wouldn't say there would be plenty, but there are a good number of jobs. All you have to do is... Uh, you should uh, able to get to the job first than the others. So that's all you, you have to do. And even right now, I'm a graduate student ambassador. Uh, and uh, my, some of my friends are working on campus. So it's I wouldn't say it would be difficult, but it's a bit challenging to get on campus in your first semester itself. Yeah, that's all I can say. But uh, I think you can get your on campus with... Uh, within your second or third semester. Yeah, that's all I can say. Yeah, if I could just add something is that, you know, especially we like to, for our graders for our classes, you know, for the undergraduate classes, of course, we can use uh, master students. And especially if you've taken a course in your first semester, then often you could become a grader after that if you did well in the class. Absolutely, absolutely, and that speaks to uh, a question that um, we haven't we've we that comes up pretty frequently. So I'll I'll uh, I'll address that for those who have the question. So a teaching and research assistantships, um, which are positions in which uh, you have some form of tuition remission attached to that, um, are unfortunately not available for our master's students in AME. Those are reserved for our PhD students. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the opportunity for 
paid research or paid teaching uh, teaching positions or related positions are non-existent for graduate students. Um, we do their uh, research. Um, many of our faculty do uh, advertise positions for master's students in their labs uh, to, to work on their research. Those positions may be paid, may be unpaid, um, or begin unpaid with the opportunity for them to be paid in future semesters if you stick with it. Um, similarly, as Dr. Rani mentioned, uh, Things like course producers um, are hourly paid positions that we definitely like to utilize our master's students for. So most of those opportunities come out or are announced via email um, to all of our current students when those positions are available. So uh, once you once you start, keep an eye on your email for those positions and um, those opportunities are available, but they're just not what you would call a teaching assistantship or a research assistantship. Yeah, and if I could just add one quick thing there, that uh, Zoe and the rest of the student affairs team in AME, every week they broadcast a uh, newsletter that includes all of these sort of uh, openings. Yes, you will receive many emails from us. Probably you will say, I received too many emails with all of the events, uh, jobs, positions, uh, opportunities that are available and out there. All right. So um, we have just one more minute left. So I'll just uh, address one more quick question. Uh, did we? Did anyone mention when we should start applying for our courses? So when you should start registering for courses. Uh, so it's nothing you need to worry about right now. Right now, focus on the you know making the decision about where you're going to attend grad school and looking ahead, uh, looking forward to beginning um, in late spring, early summer. We will reach out to you with all of the information that you need uh, about how to register and um, and when to start you'll definitely be able to register for your courses you know in the in late spring early summer you don't have to wait all the way till fall or anything like that uh, so uh, just keep an eye out for more communications from us and and courses very rarely if ever fill up in our department definitely yeah great point dr Rani don't worry about not being able to get into courses uh, at all that won't be an issue Okay, well, thank you so much to Dr. Rani, Zoe, Upasana, and Sumant. Um, we really appreciate it. And Cavalier. It. Oh, and Cavalier, <laughs> of course. I don't know how I forgot. Um, thank you guys so much for being here today, for sharing your insight. Uh, it's so valuable. We really appreciate you know hearing everything that you guys shared today. And thank you so much to my colleagues from graduate admissions for your help with the Q&A. And to all of the students who are attending, um, thank you for coming. Congratulations again on your admission. Um, we do hope to see you on campus this fall, if not sooner for a visit. You are welcome to reach out to us anytime. Um, I did put the graduate admission email in the chat. So it's viterbi.gradadmission at usc.edu. Um, please keep an eye on your email for any important information as you get ready to decide if you're committing to USC. And so thanks again, everyone. Have a great rest of your day or evening, wherever you are, and we will see you soon and fight on. Hope to see you in the fall.